Hello, I think it's important to talk about other horror games, what I liked about them, and what sort of inspiration we're drawing from them. So, I'm going to start with Silent Hill 2. Uh, Silent Hill 2 is my very favorite horror game of all time, and probably my second favorite game of all time, behind Panzer Dragoon Saga, which I'm totally obsessed with, but that's a, another story. And the game is absolutely brilliant, and... Uh, the amazing thing about it is just the atmosphere, like, if you, I can totally tell the difference, I mean, well, of course I can tell the difference, but, like, what I, I'm trying to find the right words, but basically, when you play a Silent Hill game, especially the, the old ones, there's just this oppressive mood and atmosphere, um, which is difficult to define. It's hard to point to something in the game and say, well, is it the fog? Is it the music? Is it the... I don't know. And say, what makes this atmosphere feel so great? But just playing a Silent Hill game, it's like, <sighs> my tension's already already wrapped uh, up to 11. I think the, the other game that, that really did that well uh, was the Fatal Frame series, uh, especially, like, I think one a little more so than two, even though I'd say two is a better game, which I guess I can discuss those games later, but just this tension, the mood, and then the other great things about Silent Hill, too, is you, you feel pretty vulnerable. I mean, the you get weapons, but they control like crap, and it's difficult to do any sort of combat, and I think that works for the game. Uh, I mean, I think if they were making, a, a, like, a, a true remake or reimagining or a subsequent game, I think they would probably have to clean it up a little just because, you know, modern expectations are a bit different. But I think, you know, if, well, at least I played on, like, easy or very easy if such a thing existed, and, and for me that's a perfect balance just because, like, I suck at games. I'm really bad, and, like, Resident Evil 1 just totally destroyed me and and uh it's uh it's it's great because the tension is still there i still feel that i'm threatened by these things even though you know i'm able to get through the game <coughs> without too much trouble and and that's definitely well certainly we're trying to emulate the atmosphere of silent hill um you know, I, I feel like we did a really good job of creating that sort of oppressive mood uh, with the, the art style and the, the music. Uh, I think that's something that, that people have really keyed in on for Never Ending Nightmares, is we did the, the atmosphere really well. And uh, that's due to a large part uh, to the, the influence of Silent Hill. Um, but specifically in, in Silent Hill 2, I love the sort of psychological aspects of the game. Um, so, basically everything in the game, except maybe Pyramid Man, I'm not sure what he represents psychologically, but he's totally awesome. Um, uh, but basically, um, the, uh, you know, the things with uh, the doorman and, and all these other characters, you know, all have psychological significance, and that's, again, something that we want to do with Never Ending Nightmares. I think it's important. I, I, when, when I uh, was a guest lecturer at Sid Meier's Game Dev Boot Camp, one of the things he said was basically, you know, with every number in the game, you have an opportunity to, to tell a story of an opportunity to make the player uh, feel something or, or do something, and I think that's really an amazing approach to game development because it's like you know on retrograde there were a bunch of numbers that controlled the bobbing of the of the player ship and i mean we did things with like the head bang uh was with the beat of the music but i mean like there's just so many numbers that go into the game and to, to sort of approach it with the the idea that each number is significant is is really interesting but um and, and definitely a good idea although at least for me, it, it almost makes me, you know, worry and obsess too much, so I try not to do that. But, like, with Silent Hill, and too, you know, what I'm saying is that essentially I have the opportunity to um, tell 
more of the, uh, you know, more about the psychological state of the character with every enemy. So instead of saying, this is scary because X, Y, Z, I approach things like, you know, what sort of information do I want to reveal about the character? What, what are his fears? And, and so that was uh, heavy inspiration from Silent Hill 2.